Hi, this is Queer Joe, and I'm going to do a tutorial today on something known as a tuck stitch. The tuck stitch is a technique that's commonly done on the machine, a knitting machine, but um, from a hand knitting perspective, it's a little bit more difficult. And basically what it is, is when you take a standard flat stockinette fabric, in this particular case, that's what this swatch basically is, it creates these little ruckles or buckled parts of the fabric. And honestly, all this really is, is five stitches across horizontally that are attached to the same five stitches directly above it, in this particular case, 10 rows above it. So in essence, we're buckling the fabric or folding down the fabric in such a way that it creates this little loop of fabric or this little tube of fabric. And so you see this little ruckle or tube of fabric. On the back, you can see it perhaps a little bit easier. You can see that this row is attached to a row significantly lower below it, creating this little buckled uh, tube of fabric. Um, on a stockinette uh, stock swatch, it doesn't really show up as extremely useful, perhaps, as a, a fabric that you might want. But I did find a, a stitch pattern that I liked very much on Ravelry that um, uses the technique of the tuck stitch. And when I tried to do it, I realized I couldn't really do the tuck stitch as it's described in any of the online tutorials because it required me to count down the number of rows on the back side of my fabric. And I really couldn't do it. I, I just wasn't able to. Maybe you are. And if you are, I'd suggest you don't even need to really watch this tutorial. But I really couldn't read my stitches well enough to be able to do that. And that's after being a knitter for a good long time. But you'll see that this particular pattern stitch uses that same kind of tuck stitch where it buckles the stitch together. And so we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that today. Um, it really only requires one piece of equipment that you might not already own, believe that or not, even if you have an extensive um, uh, assortment of equipment for knitting. But it requires you to have um, uh, what they call a coilless safety pin. This happens to be a two and two and a quarter inch safety pin, which is your standard safety pin, except it doesn't have the standard circular uh, coil at the end of it, and that's why they call it a coil a safety pin. Um, the coil, uh, a lot of times in your standard safety pins, actually snags your yarn a lot of times, and we're going to be using the, the coil of safety pin to hold stitches that will actually go down into the crevice of this uh, safety pin in such a way that we don't want it to get stuck in there because we're going to have to pull it off. So I'm going to switch to the other uh, uh, camera so that I can show you the actual stitching involved in, in a tuck stitch and I, how I actually use the coil of safety pins. If you don't have coil of safety pins, there's a number of places where you can get them online. In the comments for this tutorial video on YouTube, you can also find a link to where you can purchase directly through it. And it would actually benefit the Men's Knitting Retreat Scholarship Fund if you buy it through that. But you can find them anywhere you'd like. It's also used, um, these same safety pins are used in a technique that Cat Bordy put out that uh, do cabling for it. And you're well, uh, welcome to look that up as well and potentially look at how she uses it. She uses colored versions of these, and um, which are very nice. And you could order them through her, I think, too. So I'm going to switch to the other camera and show you how to do the tuck stitch. OK. So typically what I would do is knit over to the five stitches where I, where I actually want to start the base of my tuck stitch. So I'm going to knit over 10 stitches. 8, 9, 10. So this is going to be the five, st these five stitches, these five next stitches, are going to be the stitches that I pull up from behind and link to my current row to create the tuck stitch that we're talking about. And so how I'm going to do that is turning to the back side of my knitting, I'm going to use one of the coilless safety pins that we talked about. And going from, so now on the back side of my knitting, here are the f same five stitches that we talked about. But I'm going to go in from the fifth stitch over and put in the front of the coilless safety pin in through the next five stitches, the first, uh, the next uh, five stitches on my needle, but in backwards because you're going to need to take it off from this side when you're actually executing the tuck stitch. So now you can see, and one of the things I usually pull this up a little bit to make sure I haven't snagged some of the other yarn, and I'm going to secure the needle, uh, secure the safety pin, the coil of safety pin. 
So now what I've got is on the back of my knitting, my current five stitches that I'm about to knit across, I've just inserted a safety pin or kind of like a safety net. So if you've ever done a, a safety net in your knitting to make sure that uh, you don't lose your stitches, this is kind of what I'm doing just for those five stitches alone. And then I'm going to I'm gonna actually create uh, two different tuck stitches as part of the, the tutorial. So I'm going to knit across these five stitches that I've just secured under the safety pin. It's a little bit more difficult because you've got a little bit of extra bulk in there now with the uh, coil of safety pin in there. And those are the five stitches. I'm going to knit an additional five stitches. And I'm going to insert the second coil of safety pin. So again, with the coil of safety pin open, I'm going to turn my work over. And from the fifth stitch over here, I'm going to insert my coil of safety pin into the fifth stitch, the fourth stitch, the third stitch, the second stitch, and the first stitch. So you can see that I've got that tucked in there nicely. And I also haven't um, poked through any of the stitches below or anything like that in the other yarn. And then I'm going to close that up. And now the rest of this I'm going to um, spare you having to watch me knit for 10 rows on a swatch, even though it's just a swatch. Okay, we're back. And so you see what I've done is this is the initial primary baseline row for the, the tuck stitch that we're going to accomplish. And I've knitted, and I consider that the first row. So I've knitted nine more rows. And on the tenth row, we're actually going to loop back the fabric and attach it to where those stitches are. And I'll show you how to do that. So basically what we're going to do is knit up to the vertical stitch directly above where we started the the ruckle stitch and so since I started that on the 11th stitch I'm going to knit in 10 stitches okay. and now this next stitch on the needle is going to be knit together with the first stitch on the safety pin so and that's why we put the safety pin in from left, uh, right to left in this particular case, but yes. So I'm going to undo the safety pin and slip. Sorry, I'm going to show you in a second. And I'm going to slip the first stitch from on the right side of the needle off onto my right needle. and then loop this back up and just let it hang there with the other four stitches on it. And I'm going to put that onto my left needle and knit those two together. And so I'll do that again with the second. So I take the second, second stitch on the safety pin, loop it off, Hang the le remaining three stitches now and move the stitch to the left hand needle and knit those two together. And I'll do this three more times where I'll move the next stitch on the safety pin off the, knee off the safety pin and onto the left hand needle and then knit those two together. Two more to go on this one, and I can show you what it looks like. It gets a little fiddly because the yarn gets in the way, and if it falls out, it might be a problem. But basically, the the next stitch, and it's a little bit difficult to film too. So I move the next stitch on the safety pin off, let the last one hang there, put it onto my left needle, knit those two stitches together. And finally, the last one, we take off the safety pin, 
move it to your left needle and knit those two together. And you see what we've done is we've put a bend in our fabric and attach five of the stitches from the current row, these five stitches, to the five stitches directly ten rows below it on the, the fabric to create that ruckle or the tuck stitch. Again, I'll show you one more time because I've got these other five stitches secured on the back of my needle and identified. Now, if you could easily read down ten rows to pick up that purl stitch on the back without using your safety pins, all the more reason to do that without the safety pins. I couldn't do that, so I, I, for some reason I just can't seem to count correctly or I kind of find myself off by at least one or two rows and it just doesn't look correct. So, so I'm going to knit over to my next ruckle stitch and then again, now I have these five stitches that I'm going to be sorry I have these five stitches on my safety pin that I'm going to move one at a time off the safety pin up onto my left needle and knit those two stitches together. Sorry. Okay. And again, the next stitch off the safety pin, save them by turning it back so that the stitches kind of hang on the loop there. Put it onto your left needle and knit those two stitches together. And then the third one, you take the stitch off the safety pin, hang the remaining two, move it up to the left needle, and knit those two stitches together. And the last two, quite the same, quite easy. safety pin, turn that around so it stays secure on there without having to reclose the safety pin, and knit those two stitches together, and the final one, easy as cake, I love cake better than pie, don't tell that else. and knit those two stitches together. And then now that I now that I've gotten there, I can knit to the end of my row, which is only a few stitches, so I'll do that quickly. So I can straighten up. You can see more, def more defined how the ruckles and the tuck stitch look. But So it might not look quite as, quite as uniform and even. But you'll see, here's where I was able to create that little looping of fabric where I pulled it up, pulled up, the tenth row below onto the current row so that I could create that stitch and you can kind of see it. It creates that little tube in, the, in between. So feel free. What I've gotten below, I, I've linked below to a place where you can buy the coilless knit, uh, safety pins. I've also linked to uh, the pattern on Ravelry that I actually use this with, which is the um, now I, I don't own this pattern, so it's it's not mine. So if you want to buy it, you're welcome to that uh, to do that. But it actually uses this is the tuck stitch technique that they just used in that. So I don't imagine that she uses the same coil of safety pin technique I do to do it. She probably just counts down rows and and pulls it up manually with you know by by sight um, like I said I couldn't do that very easily so I wanted to find an easier way of being able to pull those stitches up it makes an incredibly beautiful fabric and there's lots of design elements where I think the tuck stitch would be really nice so I suggest you try it try it out and at least watch it for yourself to see whether it's something that you might find interesting to do and if you have any comments or questions or you want to give any feedback on the tutorial video, please feel free to leave a comment and or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.